Hello dearies! Welcome inside Cobweb Cottage. I'm excited to have a little cozy chat today. October is here in Sleepy Hollow Country and I think the cottage loves Halloween just as much as Jonas and I do. And speaking of which, Jonas isn't here today with me because he is off being a professional pumpkin carver. <laughs> So because of that, it's become a little tradition of mine to decorate for Halloween by myself. I'll put on some spooky music and just have a good time. And I thought, why not bring you guys along for some of that and the decorations and walk you through some of our decor. And I thought, why not also just throw in some witchy outfits that I feel kind of fit the whole cup of cottage aesthetic. So does that sound like a fun time to you guys? I sure hope so, because I'm ready to have a cozy spooky time in cup of cottage. All right, let's start this little decorating tour outside the cottage where Jonas and I have already decorated with corn stalks and different colored mums and different woven baskets and of course pumpkins, which we will eventually turn into jack-o'-lanterns. The Halloween bunting is one of my favorite touches because it makes the cottage look so festive and especially because it has little cobwebs on it. Every time I walk around the front of the cottage, it just makes me so incredibly happy because I feel like I'm living in one of my favorite old-fashioned Halloween postcards. We've done a few other videos showing our more minimal approach to seasonal decor and how we pretty much have our fall decorations out somewhere in the cottage all year round, and the kitchen is a very good example of that. This basket on our little kitchen table shows the Cobweb Cottage cozy aesthetic we've been trying to go for, which is like a mix of a vintage autumnal fairy tale. The inspiration really came from the beautiful artwork Jonas did for our cozy cottage tea spectral tins, which I wanted to display alongside his original character, Pumpy Doo. I really love how this cobweb cottage display turned out and what I think is a fun detail is the real spider webs that we preserved on antique books. It's something we learned how to do recently and we're still figuring it all out but these were the best ones that we got and I just love how it ties everything all together. And speaking of old books, my lovely friend Grace sent us the most magical surprise. This vintage fairy tale book called Down Spiderweb Lane from 1909. This is a book I've actually had pinned on Pinterest for ages and has been such a big inspiration to us for the whole Cup of Cottage aesthetic and world we try to create. And when she sent this to us, I couldn't believe my eyes. I started crying and I I'm so glad I was able to work out to include it in the basket with everything else and I can't wait to read through this wonderful book and all the wonderful fairy tales held within its pages. Something that's different this year than before in the kitchen is that we recently thrifted a little hutch. So it gives me a little more room to decorate and space to hold vintage teacups and teapots. And I really love how this little basket turned out over on that side. And of course, I wanted to display our sweater weather tea tin with tea spectral that we did last year. And that is a really cozy autumn scene that really matches the autumn in the country cookbook that we've been using recipes from this fall. I have this little frame that I like to change out seasonally with different postcards. And of course, in the fall, it's my favorite to be able to display Jonas's artwork on his Sleepy Hollow greeting postcards and his original character, Pumpy Doo. So that's pretty much it for the kitchen. It's such a warm and cozy room. It's the room that gets the most sunlight and the one that faces the backyard graveyard, which has been so incredibly gorgeous to look at through the window while having a cup of tea and watching the rain fall or watching the leaves fall on a sunny day. We pressed some of the leaves that we found and hung them up and when the sun comes through the window it just makes the whole kitchen glow with this warm cozy feeling. And we have some pumpkins on the windowsills which I just make me so happy and some of Jonas's little acorn critters that he painted jack lantern faces on. 
So let's head into our little living room where I just added a few extra seasonal touches. As I mentioned, we have uh, fall decor pretty much all year round, but the things that I do pull out of storage are flat things, things that are easy to pack away like linens and banners and streamers. So since the cottage really does have an autumnal vibe all year round, the thing that I like to do in October that makes it feel more Halloween-y is by adding lots of jack-o'-lanterns and extra leaves. As you can tell, makes me really happy. So since we don't have much space to store extra seasonal pillows or blankets, I actually found these really cool pillows that are reversible. So I can just flip it around and have the jack-o'-lantern facing out and then we just kind of keep our fall colored blanket out all year round as well. So in the living room we have the original front door of the cottage which we don't use so it's really a fun backdrop to decorate with. So I hung up a little banner that has little fall leaves on it and I added once October hit these little vintage Halloween owls with witch hats on sitting on a pumpkin that a friend sent to me. So those little owls actually inspired me to tie in more owls into the vintage Halloween display here in front of the door. And I really, really am happy how it turned out. We've done many versions of this over the last couple years, but I think by the fact that now we've thrifted a lot more things or found more antique things at estate sales, that it finally just all kind of really came together in a beautiful way. So on the other side of the living room where we have our wardrobe and mirror, I like to put these vintage reproduction Halloween paper cutouts or die cuts as I think they're called. And they just make me so incredibly happy. I just think they are the cutest things and the little jack-o'-lantern faces are pretty much human-sized. <laughs> so I can't help myself uh, getting a little into the Halloween spirit and pretending I have a pumpkin head. So on the dresser, I am very pleased with how it turned out this year because we decided to go with a more vintage Halloween Sleepy Hollow theme because we are celebrating the bicentennial of the Legend of Sleepy Hollow this October in the Sleepy Hollow Book Club that we formed this year. So of course, we knew we'd had to celebrate that in our decorations as well. And it was so fun because Jonas surprised me on our anniversary with this really beautiful lantern that is kind of a replica of one you would see in the colonial times, something you could totally imagine in a Tim Burton movie. And it throws this really cool pattern on the wall. So there's a lot of different ways that you can decorate in a Sleepy Hollow way, but since we are celebrating the 200th anniversary, we really wanted to do it in more of a kind of dark academia vibe, which actually really goes well with Jonas's artwork. He's been painting the Headless Horseman for many years now, and I really wanted to take the artwork that we had of all year and pull it all into one place and really show it off alongside of our other decorations. A fun little trick I learned from a friend is to take old books in the colors that you want to really set the tone of your decorations. So I found some of our antique books that are kind of that dark brown and leathery look. And we also have this really cool antique edition of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow that is in Washington Irving's sketchbook that was published in 1820. And I pulled out Jonas's quill pen and some antique postcards from Sleepy Hollow of the Old Dutch Church just to kind of tie in that author aesthetic just to give that nod to the bicentennial of the legend of Sleepy Hollow and to kind of tie all the Halloween decorations together just a few more vintage Halloween details and jack-o'-lantern candle holders that make it super cozy oh yeah and of course a few Sleepy Hollow scented candles
So I really hope you enjoyed decorating with me and seeing some of our vintage Halloween decor. And now it's time to head out into the backyard graveyard where it is looking in its full autumnal glory. And I wanted to share with you some of the kind of vintage witchy outfits that I think really pair well with the decoration vibe, which is kind of a new aesthetic that has blown up this year alongside cottage core is also dark cottage core. And I think that describes the style I've been looking after for the last couple of years. So it's kind of that autumnal, witchy, cozy, spooky vibe. And of course, I like to add my own vintage twist. So in this first outfit, I wanted to emulate the colors of the Cobweb Cottage witchy style, which to me is a little bit more gray than black. And I finally invested in a dress from Little Women, which is a wonderful linen clothing line. And this dress is just so gorgeous. And I realized that it paired wonderfully with this handmade shawl that someone gifted to me many, many years ago before I even could dream of Cabo Cottage. So it just felt so beautiful to be able to tie it all together. And with this gray witchy hat, I kind of feel like Lindsay the Gray of Cabo Cottage. This next outfit really makes me feel more of like a pinup vintage witch in the 1940s, which is what probably most people imagine when they think of a vintage witch. Um, which is why I've been trying to kind of make my own vintage cottagey witchy style, but I couldn't help myself in commissioning this wonderful little cape that my friend Elizabeth made. I had seen this vintage illustration of a girl wearing it in a Halloween costume and I've always wanted to recreate it. And since I don't really have the means to sew myself right now, when my friend Elizabeth was open for commission, I asked her if she could make it and she did a wonderful job and just makes me feel like the cutest little moon witch. And this is the last outfit I wanted to share. It's a little bit more dramatic than the other ones. The other ones could kind of be a little bit more for everyday wear if I wanted it to be, but this one's definitely more a special All Hallows Eve look with this spiderweb shawl that I got on Etsy last year that you've seen me wearing, and a long velvet skirt and a big pointy hat. So I really hope you enjoyed seeing these different outfits and the whole kind of way that it ties together with the decorations at Cobweb Cottage. Well, dearies, I hope you had a really cozy time with me here in the cottage. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. And if this video charmed you, please give it a thumbs up. Maybe share with a friend. And just wanted to wish you all a very wonderful, happy Halloween. Bye for now.